You know, when I read Holy Scripture, I read of the gospel, so beautiful, the epistles, and you can hear what, through the power of the Holy Spirit, what was written by the disciples, and it's so beautiful. And I think of these holy men uh, who were transformed by Jesus Christ. I can't help many times in thinking, what would Simon Peter think if he was afforded a glimpse into the future? Uh, what would he think? What would his thoughts be? And it probably would be quite something because there's such a difference between a holy man back then and what's perceived as a holy man today. Take a look at this. This is what's perceived as an end times man of God. I wonder what Simon Peter, just in looking at this one picture, what he would think. First of all, you'd have to explain to him what this alleged man of God, this modern day man of God is doing right now. Peter wouldn't, Simon Peter wouldn't understand. And you'd have to explain to him, well, yeah, this is, uh, Simon Peter, this is a, an alleged end times man of God with his effeminate bracelets. And Simon Peter, what this guy is doing, he's, he's not out preaching. Uh, you'd have to explain to him, this man quit his job defying scripture, and he stands in front of a mirror all day and takes pictures of himself over and over and over again and posts them for the world to see. So Simon and Peter probably wouldn't understand what a picture is, what a camera is. You'd have to explain to him, well, here this effeminate man who is a fraud is holding this box right here. Simon Peter, this is a camera. This captures images. And so this narcissist stands in front of a mirror and takes pictures of, not his family, of himself. And again, he posts them. You'd have to describe to Simon Peter what social media was. But he posts pictures of himself all day long, all month long. And you'd probably see Simon Peter's face become very confused. But then suddenly he probably would wake up and he'd know exactly what scripture he could take you to to describe what we're seeing right here. I have no doubt uh, Simon Peter would take you over to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and probably starting in verse 1, uh, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of what? Their own selves. Boy, oh boy. And I guess that's the part why I'm still on this guy. I, I struggle to logically try to discern why an alleged man of God quits his job, does not work, spends his days in the gym while he <laughs> takes endless selfies of himself. Now, the funny thing is, this is just the one that he posted. How many hundreds of selfies does he have on his phone? Again, standing in front of a mirror, taking pictures of himself. The extraordinary narcissism on display. He's unable to quench his narcissism because it's evident as his constant posts, the selfies of himself. And everybody thinks this is normal. He he says, hey, you know, it's, it's, my, it's my journey getting healthy. No, this is a man uh, who is married and should not be doing this. There's really only one reason why you do this. You're soliciting. And I'll leave it at that. You can discern for yourself when a grown man is posting physical pictures on social media. Guys don't care. There's only one reason he's doing that. He's doing it for the women. All right, so right now we're going to listen to Pete's challenge, and we're going to accept his challenge and put it right back on him. Pete, of course, is going to be sharing some information about the upcoming Chicago seminar, and then stay with me because we're going to show you his latest magic trick and some other stuff. But so, Pete, uh, let us know what's going on. Of course, Pete's coming to us live from the gym where Captain Steroids is getting jacked and shredded because he doesn't work and all that good stuff. So, Pete, what's going on here, pal? The $700 for the entire course um, it's it's hands-on. It's sometimes eight to ten hour teachings. So he just told you that his regular uh, his regular school that he has, you got to pay a required donation of seven hundred dollars. And of course, if you'll notice, Pete constantly is slamming his fist into his hand 
Uh, this is a sign that everything that he's saying is true, right? It's all true. He's not a liar, right? Here we go. Today depends on uh, the class, but we're going to be in Chicago. Uh, there's a registration. The registration, believe it or not, is only $25. Look at him smile there, right? <laughs> he's, ha he's happy because he's about to make bank. This is true. Uh, please don't think that these guys scheme on different ways to get paid, you know, going from city to city. He's going to have a lot more seats available, so he doesn't need to charge the $700. He can charge $25. Why not? Either way, you're going to pay for the gospel, which is Antichrist. It's all Antichrist, but it doesn't matter to him. While he's in the gym not working and getting shredded and juicing, uh, he's telling you the opportunity. All you got to do is pay $25, and you can learn all the secrets. All the secret stuff you don't know, just like Jonathan Clark, right? But wait, we're not done. Right, so if you've always wanted to come to class, if you always want to see what the school's about, I'm going to Chicago with John Martin. I'm going to be out there at his church, and uh, I'm going to put the information underneath the video, uh, and you can tag me. You can also go to my wall, but I'm um, just calling out to all the alumni, all the people. If you want to get trained, if you want to come out with me, if you want to sit down with me, maybe you have questions, maybe you want to know how you can be involved, maybe you want to know. Is that we're doing if you're just hitting the wall and you feel like you're going in circles and you just can't get over that hump or maybe you notice how they, they always do this all right friends are you hitting a wall you just can't get over that hump well here's the solution it's like an infomercial and they always do that and they're experts at doing this because you have people watching this guy going i feel like i'm hitting a wall well here's what i would recommend to you for those of you who are listening to me probably hating me but if you're hitting a wall and you can't get over that hump Turn the TV off, turn your computer off, shut down the phone, pick up your Holy Bible and begin to seek the living of the living God through Holy Scripture. This guy's not going to share any secrets with you that you can't already discover through the Holy Scripture. And I, and I pause here so you can really soak that in. But you see, that's what's happening in the end times. 2 Timothy 4, 3, for the time will come and they will not endure sound doctrine. Where is sound doctrine found? In Holy Scripture, it's not found at a paid seminar where you can go out and feel good about yourself because Pete looked at you and said, hey, you're special. But that's what these guys do, and that's why they get paid. And by the way, you can't pay for the gifts of the Spirit. I'll just say that again and again and again. You, For those who truly want Jesus Christ, they're going to seek him through Holy Scripture. But wait, we're not done yet. Be, uh, there's some things that aren't settled in you. Um, we've been rated five out of five from pastors and leaders all over the globe for the team. Did you hear how dumb that is? He's giving himself a self-testimony here for the selfie-taking narcissist. We've been rated five out of five by pastors and leaders all over the world. How dumb is it? Where, where is this survey? I'd like to take it. It, it. There's so many things you could read into it. Is it well, he also says he was rated five out of five. Not three out of five or four out of five. Uh, just a straight five out of five by, to take his word for it, pastors and leaders all over the world. Who are these pastors and leaders? And where can I see this survey? Are you telling me this guy got solid fives? By the way, he literally says for the accuracy of the word. Now, here's a guy who was busted not near weeks ago by me for citing verses on his website from the Passion Translation. The Passion Translation, Google it. And then you go watch Sid Roth, his little clip of Mr. Brian Simmons, who, by the way, authored the Passion Translation. Brian Simmons said that Jesus Christ showed up in his room one night and came to give him a better translation. He's a lunatic. He said Jesus shows up and takes him to heaven. I was in the library of heaven, and Jesus was there. And this is crazy. This also defies scripture. Jesus said, no man hath ascended into heaven in, in uh, the book of John. And this guy was quoting the Passion Translation, and now he's talking about the accuracy of the word? Notice one thing also, and I'm, I'm sorry for rambling on here. This stuff is so important. If you go to his website, he has since changed those verses to the King James. And he did it because of my video, but he didn't come out and say that. He came out and mocked me by posting my video. Look, guys, I'm under attack. But he did go make the changes. What an absolute hypocrite. That's challenge number one, Pete. Address that. Why did you change the verses on your website after my video came out and called you out on it, but then didn't say a word for the sin of citing verses from the Passion Translation? Why won't you address that, fraud? Because you're in the gym getting jacked? 
Let's continue. Teachings for the accuracy of the word, which means that we're the only school on the planet that allows the students to challenge what it is we're giving them in the all right, did you hear that? Let, let, me, let me let you finish. Class. So as I'm teaching, any student at any time can challenge what it is that I'm teaching. Okay, there you go. All right, Pete, I'm going to challenge you. But to get some context, I, I have to first go back to show the people what you taught. So let's take a look at that. All right, now this video is ready available on Pete Cabrera Jr.'s YouTube channel. You can go watch it. Uh, you can see the title. Even the spoon has to obey. It's amazing. Well, here is Spoon Man, where he blasphemously uh, does a demonstration, I guess you can call it, where he commands all the power of Jesus Christ into a plastic spoon. It's sickening to watch, for those who truly love Jesus, uh, to watch him mock God and mock the Holy Spirit. But nevertheless, he did it. He commanded all the power of Jesus Christ in the spoon, and he would go out and hand this spoon to sick people. And amazingly, they were healed, according to him and according to the actors. And I would call this absolute kundalini. It's a magic trick. It is familiar spirits in action. But make no mistake, it is unholy, and it is antichrist. So now that you have some context of what he's teaching, by the way, when people, the, the Simon the Sorcerer people watch this, the only reason they pay the $700 is so that they can have the same power. They want to do what Pete's doing. They want to go hand plastic spoons because why not? It's It looks pretty fun. It, you're, you're displaying some sort of a power. It's not the power of God. But nevertheless, that's why they pay the $700. And this is Antichrist. So now that you have some context, let's put the challenge to Pete. Now, I've taken the liberty of drawing out a map on Google Maps. As you know, Pete Jr., Spoon Man, if you will, is going to be at 5407 South Hyde Park Boulevard. This is Chicago. This is my hometown. I know right where this is. But I've drawn out a map. If you look here, uh, if you follow Lakeshore Drive all the way up to 160 East Illinois Street, here is where uh, the Chicago Cancer Institute is. Here we go, Spoon Man. Here's your challenge. Uh, for the love of God, for the relief of the hundreds of people who suffer from cancer here. This is just about eight short miles away from you. Here's my challenge. For and in the power of Jesus Christ, for a people that needs healing so desperately, my challenge to you is to forego the thousands of dollars you'll make with your celebrity appearance here and march up Lakeshore, get to the uh, hospital up here, the Chicago Cancer Institute, March through that with all your brain-dead, idol-worshipping followers and heal all the cancer sufferers uh, that are at this facility right here. What do you say? It's sad that I would have to challenge you to this, but nevertheless, I am challenging you. Now, people that think I'm being mean, I'm not. This guy claims to be so filled with the healing power of Jesus Christ via the Holy Spirit that he can even speak it into a spoon. So that takes me to the second part of this challenge. Pete, if you're too busy, you've got commitments. I get it. I, I can't. I've got to teach this. It's so important. I can't take the time to go eight, eight miles to do this. Here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to send you a box of plastic spoons. I'll have it dropped off uh, for you there. Uh, or, or heck, I would even deliver it myself. You can lay hands on the plastic spoons and speak the power of Christ into these spoons. Either I or I'll have a courier pick it up, take it up to the hospital. I know an orderly that works at this that, at this institute. He can hand deliver a spoon to each of the rooms where there is a cancer uh, sufferer, and we can clean out that hospital and get these incredible people all healed of this terrible, vicious disease. By the way, a disease that not only ravishes these people and brings them to death, but they have to endure chemotherapy, prodding, poking, the endless suffering that they endure at the hands of this disease, and not to mention the hundreds of thousands and sometimes into the millions of dollars in accruing medical bills, not to mention the families that sit by and watch their loved ones suffer. There's so many benefits to doing this, Pete. Now, as a proclaimed healer, a man of God, there is no reason for you not to do this. What's more important, healer, spoon man? Getting these people healed and by then spreading the gospel or 
making thousands of dollars at your celebrity appearance at this chump's church. There's my challenge to you. There's no reason for you not to accept that challenge. I know what you're, you're not going to address this. You're not going to accept the challenge because you're a fraud. And you're doing the same thing that Benny Hinn did. See, that's why Benny Hinn never did that. Because he knew that his performance was on stage. The stage being the church, the stage being the arenas where he appeared. Same thing for you. You hide behind your video camera on YouTube, on Facebook, at the gym, working out or on a Disney cruise or in Cancun. And you won't do things like this because you're a fraud. But nevertheless, for the sake of the people, I know I'm not going to wake up all your, your brain dead followers, but I'll wake up a few. There's no reason for you not to do this. After all, I'm going based on your claims, Spoon Man. All right, so now we're going to take a look at Spoon Man's latest Chris Angel, David Blaine magic trick done in public. And the pattern you know, well, you'll notice with Pete Cabrera Jr. is that it's always the trick first. Let me show you a trick. You ready? <laughs> giggle, giggle. And you'll see this over and over again. It's never the gospel. It's always let me show you the trick and then maybe show you a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. That's Pete's whole ministry. Let me show you the trick. So here they're in Burger King. He's got a friend with him. And uh, the context here is he's placed an order and the, and the girl asks him uh, for a name that she can put on the order when it's ready, then call the name. So then I'll let Pete and his friend take it from there. One in a billion, right? Did you want to? Yeah, so, so sometimes what we used to do was one in a hundred, pick a number between one in a hundred. Then it got to be between one in a million. And then lately Pete's been saying one in a billion, billion with a B. So she said to her, pick a number between one in a billion. Oh, so then, so then she did. So she didn't tell us. And so, you know, um, I guess the number is wrong. Obviously, one in a billion, who, who gets that? There's not a chance. Unless God's speaking to you, there's not a way in the world. All right, here's, here's a, a secret insight for you. Uh, if you're, the way you're spreading the gospel is getting people to pick a number between one in a billion, it's not God that's speaking to you. All right, it, it's sad that I have to say that out loud, uh, but that's not God. God, uh, the Word of God gets shared through the Holy Scripture, uh, through testimonies in many cases, but always pointing to Jesus. Uh, but you'll notice again in this pattern that this story is not pointing to Jesus. It's pointing to Pete Cabrera. And, and so they're, they're just a little a little wisdom for you, which really isn't wisdom, it's just common sense, I'd call it. The world's going to get that number right. And so then Pete said, what's your number 500? And then this look came over her face, and she just started getting really nervous, like kind of shaky. And she just looked at him and then said, what was your number? And she said it was 500. And I, and I, and I asked her, I said, what are the odds of that? What are the odds that he could get the number? I'll tell you the odds. They're one in a billion. One in a billion that he could get that number. And so when she said 500 was the number, then she looked at Pete and she was just kind of shaky. I tried talking to her. I tried talking yeah. to her, but she was like freaking out. Like Yeah. So from Pete's own lips, she was freaking out. Why would the girl freak out? Now, the gospel convicts. It causes people to break down in cases, some cases with tears, repentance, and in many cases, beauty. But the reaction that he's describing, and he goes on to describe this girl freaking out, is the same reaction that if you've ever watched David Blaine or Chris Angel or some of these other street magicians who actually use the power of Satan to do their tricks, that's the exact reaction that most people gave to them. Freaking out, running away. There's been many cases where people have rebuked uh, David Blaine for using witchcraft. And so it wasn't a, the testimony of a girl who, you know, immediately began to feel conviction. Uh, it was the reaction of a magic trick uh, from a person who used actual magic and witchcraft. Like, she looked really nervous and was like, so I'm like, okay. Uh. <laughs> okay. That wasn't the gospel. He said he tried. Then he said he tried to pray over her. But really, who does that? And as a result, uh, because he claimed to be a man of God, that his friend said, this is a man of God. Uh, you think that girl's ever going to seek God? No. She felt something else, something evil. Uh, way to go, Pete. And, and then you're... 
narcissistic enough to post this on social media. Absolutely astonishing. This is, this is and again, think of the apostle Simon Peter, the disciple, getting a glimpse to all this folly. Think of what Simon Peter did, and then compare it to what this spoon man, juiced up narcissist is doing in these end times. He's ruining the gospel for most people. Now I'll wrap up this video in 2 Peter chapter 2. Scripture is so powerful. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many, a few, no, and many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness they shall with fiend words make merchandise of you. Friends, this is exactly P. Cabrera, Spoonman's ministry. He is making merchandise of you, thinking that he can sell the gospel for $700 in the form of a required donation. His words, by the way, on his website, are required donation. Think of the oxymoron of that statement, a required donation. That's not to mention what he gets off his PayPal, all the other forms where he can receive donations for making people feel good about themselves. Not to mention what he gets from his European schools. Dude, dude is making huge money. There's always going to be a smile on this guy's face. Not even having the discernment to realize it's not good to take a Disney cruise, Disney, the most satanic organization in the history of the world, possibly. He has no discernment. He's an absolute fraud. But here's scripture again, speaking the truth. While Pete Cabrera takes endless selfies from the gym, so many selfies it would make Kim Kardashian blush, but his followers are none the wiser. They don't care. They have abandoned the truth because of their own lusts. 2 Timothy 4.3, I'm paraphrasing. And there it is. Wake up in the name of Jesus Christ.